Hello and welcome back to Escape from the Walled City is the title of the thing. Um, this is episode three, so if you've started listening here, what are you doing? This is the wrong one. Go, go back! back. To, go back and start with episode one, or better yet, go back and start with the whole of Quest of Ruin, listen to that whole thing, and then listen to this. We are gathered back around the Walled City, which used to have a name but has long been forgotten. Our four heroes here are finally united in their quest to escape the city. Let's go around and meet our characters starting from this side. Yes, hello, I'm Hayden Cadone and I'm playing the halfling barbarian Fingal Dalton. Uh, hello, I am Gina Moriarty and I am playing Alva, the augmented cleric who does not look like what she used to look like. <laughs> <laughs> For reasons you'll find out in episode two, so go listen. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cassie. I am playing Serena, the Aladrin Ranger. Hi, I'm Quinn. I'm playing Briley, aka Law, who is a tiefling warlock. Nice. So, we're picking up with you guys heading out on your mission. So, Echo, who is. Yeah, so he's <laughs> Smoke Janassi, who has given you the mission of basically breaking into the uh, Eurola estate to access the mainframe to access the information about blessing distribution. So, blessings is the power that comes from the church which is then distributed to the noble families. It's basically how magic works in this city. So you guys have been tasked with going and getting the information so that Echo can better understand where these blessings are and how he can get at them. How are you getting to the Eurola estate? So Alva's kind of finally calmed down. She's taken maybe maybe an hour <laughs> to calm down. Finally. And change clothes as well, because mm -hmm. she was wearing what she was wearing underneath her vestments. And with the help with probably some of the club girls. <laughs> can I have my jacket back? Yes, you can. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so she's a bit more like, okay, accepting of her situation, just like, I do think I need to leave. She hasn't explained it to the rest of the party just yet. They just, I think all they know is that she needs to leave. Yeah. And she's been framed for murder. They don't understand the implications yet. So she's a bit more like, okay, let's do this. I would like to cast Find Vehicle. Ooh. Oh! Okay, so uh, okay. remind me, how does that work? I yeah. summon a spirit that assumes the form of a non-military land vehicle of my choice. Okay. So I'm just going to summon a normal car. Okay, cool. So uh, you walk out into the street. I, I assume you want to get a little way away from the club so that not yeah. everyone can see you doing this. Yeah. You raise your hand. Do you need to roll anything for this? Or is it just something you can do? I think it's just... Something I can pretty do. Pretty sure it's just yeah, so yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. Just um, yeah. So I summon a vehicle, and it reflects the origin for some degree. It will look cyberpunk, basically. Yeah. Um, I have a supernatural bond with it, and I am proficient, even if I'm not normally with this kind of vehicle. Cool. Okay. So you raise your hand, and sort of gathering in your palm is like it starts off as like little dust particles, but then as it swirls, they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it launches out and does go and then it's as if these little particles are like multiplying um, in this sort of cloud so this cloud gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it's like 10 square feet of dust particles which then go solidify in and then just drops sort of with a boof onto the road a car just like manifests right in front of you. Would, would Fingal have had much experience of magic in the fire? Um, not at all. No. no. So, so Fingal is like Whoa! And starts starts clapping. <laughs> Do you think this will be helpful? Look at that! You know there's a reason to keep you around. I'll fly alongside. She spreads her wings and starts flapping them. One of the club girls who's kind of come out with you <laughs> says, "You know, this is meant to be a covert operation, and that's really easily noticeable." Uh, as you told. <laughs> fine, fine. So, and then the club girl goes, kind of looks around, trying to je trying to gauge who the. Uh, like the leader of his and she kind of just eventually settles on you. Yeah, there's just like the the most tired brain cell. Yeah. So, Hi. Who is the most responsive? Probably you. Yeah, <laughs> and she kind of just passes you a number and just says, that's um, Echo's direct right. line. So um, if anything happens, just let us know if uh, we need to burn the evidence. Right. And I will uh, input that number so I can just like speed dial, mm -hmm. essentially, so I don't have to waste time being like beep. Beep. Yeah. Um, cool. So after she's done that, she turns around, and goes back inside. You all. How long journey. is the journey going to take? I mean, it's like a five-mile journey, so like five, ten minutes depending oh, okay. on traffic. That's fine. And I have the car for eight hours. Sweet. Nice. Yeah. Get away, um, baby. Hey. Also, you we've been traveling 
together for a while. So I've got Natural Explorer up for pretty much while we're in the city consistently. Okay. Difficult terrain doesn't slow our travel. We can't become lost except by magical means. We remain alert to danger even while engaged in other activities. If we're tracking other creatures, I can also learn their exact number, sizes, and how long ago they passed through the area. Okay, well I'm going to interpret that as basically a um, cyberpunk Google Maps. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 There's like a Google Maps and a little bit of like infrared yeah. stuff going like, on. And it, it's like ways level as well, so it's just like you have like up-to-date information of where there's like traffic jams, yeah. where there's people, where there's like obstacles or stuff so between the two of you like you're driving i assume yeah and um zarina's in the I'm front seat i'm calling with you. passenger seat yeah. immediately yeah. Oh, yeah. so you're so you're just like i'm just <laughs> calling shotgun and i've got my feet up so we're just bash. sat awkwardly in the back yeah, you no. <laughs> after about 10 minutes you of driving me. i you saved your life yesterday this is my car fudge this and <laughs> just start flying over the top she stares you down what's happening this now? is my car get your She's... feet off the dash oh, oh. oh. she stares you down and she stares back Okay, uh, so Serena, I... roll. Oh god, who should roll? I'm going to say it, this as a intimidation? yeah contested yeah. intimidation. Yeah. So eat, both of you roll intimidation. Okay. Mm. Can I? <laughs> she's so scary. I mean, she's not scary. She's just like she's just stubborn at the moment. Yeah. She's just like I made yeah. this car. You know what? Because of that, I'm going to allow you to roll with advantage on that because okay. you're being you like protected by your vehicle. I should be okay. Okay, but it's just Ten. not loading. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a six. So it's a solid ten. nineteen. Okay, so yeah, she's not going to back down on the feet on the dashboard thing. Okay, well, I'm going to break hard. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Whenever I break, I break hard. You guys just see Law fly off the front. What happened to the self mission? Oh my god. She got bored. Well, I'm I sort of lean. I lean. Oh. Okay, you are so lucky because the streets are basically deserted right now, so no one sees you <laughs> flying along, <laughs> along the road. We're going to die. <laughs> I, so I lean to Selena and I say, so, so what? Are you like half Hella or something? Like, what's all. What's all this? That's really funny. Oh, I start laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. I was driving, she's just laughing at me. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> so, you know how we're going to the Urola estate? Yeah. I'm going to introduce myself again. Hi, I'm Celestine Urola. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I stopped laughing and I'm like. Huh. Because yeah. I, obviously, like, um, my relationship with the church and the church with the. Estates. Mm -hmm. This is a name I recognise. Yeah. I'm like, is it like a myth of like she disappeared at some point? Yeah, she just vanished. Yeah, it's it's like I'm a, like, oh. You you were aware that there were two children of the Arona Estates mm. at one point, and then in like polite company at, at like parties and stuff, the parents started only answering questions about one of them. Yeah. So it's one of those. Yeah. It's one of those things that. We're very disappointed in one of them, and so we're going to pretend that she never existed. So yeah, I know vaguely of this second child, so I stop laughing, and I'm just like, oh. This is something we keep between ourselves, alright? Yeah, of course. Only if you keep your feet off my dash. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, 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 hearing this, oh. very slowly lean Check back. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. And the law's just leaving you back in the dust. Uh, um, um, law's not here for this yeah. thing. So law's not here. I think Fink was thinking to himself like, how are all these ladies? Women so scary. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yeah. I'll take a few rounds in the room. Yeah, I'll, 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 take, I'll, I'll take some pit over this. With the with the police, she takes off the other dash mm -hmm. and uh, sits up properly. Yes. So, a uh, little bit of a blessing. Not much, but just enough. Will this make the mission more difficult? I don't know if we get seen. Well, if we get seen, I'm probably in more of a pickle than you. So. Let's don't get seen. Your part might get out of here. I'm not going to abandon you or anything. <laughs> okay, so um, you arrive as opposed to <laughs> the other person with us who is just going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you arrive outside the Aurora Estate, there's like a big gated like manor estate, so there's like a big house in the middle, there's grounds around it, and then a big fence sort of thing all around it. I'm guessing you're you're pulling up outside the, the front gate? For now I kind of pull out pull up um nearby because mm -hmm. I'm just like I know this is supposed to be a covert mission but I don't know what I'm doing but I do think that parking right in front of the estate might be a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> okay, Quinn, what's Riley doing? Reappears on top of the car. Rivers on top of the car. It does not Jeez. have respect for my car. <laughs> she like she has her feet hooked over one side of the car and her head is poking down the other side of the car. 
Do you mind? No. <laughs> So what's the plan? Me. Stop pissing off the cleric with me. We might need that. Stop pissing them off. They're no. pissing me off. I get out of the car. I will also get out of the car. I dismiss the car at will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she I, catches I, herself I, You dismiss ways. the car while I'm still in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sort of like... <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, you... you uh, Laura just catches herself with her wings. Yeah. Like, they're still... Uh, <laughs> yeah. S- nice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I completely forgot. Ariane's just been with you this whole time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so she was just kind of sat in the back, just kind of awkwardly, just not making eye contact, not saying anything. Hang on. You're outside the gate. Um, Ariane just kind of sidles up to the gate, looks in, and just kind of whispers back, don't forget, we have Echo's person on the inside, so if we can make ourselves known without you know, alerting the entire estate, then we'll be able to just go in no problem. So do you have the okay. number? There's no pr- there's no direct lines into the estate. It's all sort of um, a closed system. You have to come out here to use like the intercity connection. Ugh. So we're going to. I mean, need... I could ask the computer to not do that, but I'd need a terminal. I, I could. I mean, I'm, I'm quite well known. I I could go in first. You know, cause a bit of a distraction, Second. as it were. Or I can do this, and she kind of shapeshifts into you. Oh my god! With, uh, <laughs> myself. Whoa. I look damn good! <laughs> Shakes it off. <laughs> I could disguise myself as one of them. One of the others? Mm. Do you know what they look like? Now we've got a photo? I mean, we've still got the internet out here, so I'm just gonna like open a search engine and just be like, there's, there's paparazzi photos, they're rich. Also, they're her family, she's keeping track of them. Yeah. Mm. Gina, what are you looking at? I was looking up my cantrip on off. So it's like, it's literally a power button, I can just press it mm-hmm. remotely basically mm-hmm. okay then uh, yeah the the gates are on like an, an electrical an electric so there, i don't there's no like software based shutdown sequence no it's it's just like an on off thing so you turn on the motor that I just, opens the gate and then like while these guys are doing this i just go Oop. <laughs> what did you Bye. that works i told you she'd be useful yeah all right that works i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> okay so the the gates swing open and Ariandra just kind of looks around and says, okay, it doesn't look like there's any guards nearby, so let's get in and get the gates closed before um, anyone notices we're here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess after we've passed through, I'll press it, I'll do on off again. Mm-hmm. And Okay, and yeah, the gates are yep. closed, that's fine. Um, so it's a bit of a walk to the, it's one of those where there's like a big long driveway up to the actual estate, and then there's a, one of those crescent moon Driveway. Yeah. driveways. So. Cool, Laura's Fancy. picking up uh... Fingle. <laughs> that one. <laughs> so, Laura's picking up Fingle by his shoulders and flying down the road. Oh, okay. what the f? <laughs> Could you do me? What the <laughs> Could you do me a perception check? Please? Absolutely, I can. This is my How strong are you? I'm just, just carrying like, oh, okay. Actually, before that, I'm going to ask you to do a strength check to see if you can pick him up. Yeah, like, Fingal is small, but dense. I am dense, yes. Hello? Yeah, in more than one sense Eleven. of the yes. um, what's, How heavy are you? I'm... I am... Heavy. I'm a big boy. I heavy. am 45 pounds. <laughs> I don't know how heavy that is. I'm, I'm big. I'm big. Not I'm, It's not very heavy, but I'm big, I'm big for a hang half. On, hang on, hang on. But I'm, 45 pounds is manageable. Pounds. That's like yeah, I, I, I think, can, I think a six foot two. Is okay, you'll be able to pick him up. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Cool. Yeah, picks you up my shoulders, flies yeah. down what the driveway, the f- comes back, picks you up, flies no, down. I don't. Okay. <laughs> and then with you, no. She grabs your ankles. I cast Word of Radiance. Ooh. It is a cantrip. Ooh. Oh, okay. What does that do? Roll a hit or? No, I don't know actually. But I, I know it's a cantrip. <laughs> I cast this. You know what it does? No. Okay, well, I was looking at it while earlier. She's, while she's looking at that, could you do me that perception check? Yeah, please? I don't remember. Serena so just kind of does the thing where you know the like the man standing there emoji. It's just that but being carried. Yeah, seventeen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. When, as you were pro- you didn't really clock it when you were bringing finger over, but as you're bringing Zarina closer to the house you see um, like beams of lights which are like flashlights so you can see that there are guards on the estate and they're just kind of looking around they're, they're just on patrol they're, they're not actively looking for anyone but you can see that there are people here just kind of doing a patrol of the area right as she gets back with Serena Serena just kind of looks at finger looks at Serena hide my pleasure yep roger that goes Vanish. back grabs ankles okay so 
You, <laughs> what, are you still looking up your cantrip? Each creature of my choice that you can see within range must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d6 radiant damage. Nothing to roll. What is with my dice today? <laughs> Have I peed off the dice gods? Uh, my spell save DC is 13. Yeah, so... Yeah, no. Yeah, so that's a no. So that's, uh... What kind of damage? Radiant. Well, in this setting... Um, yeah, Radiant's fine. Yeah. Two. I don't think she wants you to carry her. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's literally like you utter I'm, a divine I'm, word. So I swear, I'm, I'm, basically... <laughs> I'm currently hiding in a bush. Yeah. I'm also hiding. Could you guys do me some stealth checks while yeah. this yeah, is I, I, I can indeed. working out? Including me? No, no, you're... No, you're down back with the, me. These are the, uh, 19 for 23. Okay, yeah, you're 26. fine. 26. Yeah, you're both fine. You're, you've <laughs> I also rolled 19. <laughs> yeah, so you've, jumped in, being tiny. you've jumped in some like bushes and any guards that happen to walk by you, they don't notice you're there for worth a dang. Just vanish into the shadows like, ah, oh. Okay, so um, <laughs> Alva's just uh, hit Riley with a word of radiance. Yeah, um, I basically grab- just yell in binary. Cool, I'm grabbing uh, Ariandra instead. Okay. And just taking her over and popping her in the bush. Mm-hmm. Coming back. Um, okay, hang on, just before we do that. <laughs> Putting case- her in a bush! <laughs> in case you haven't noticed, Alva does not like being touched. Yeah. Okay, hold on a second. Just need to, to, to. Okay, yeah, she's. So she's just like storming. So um, you pick up Ariandra, you zoom her over. You're thinking at one point that the uh, the wind the, the wind resistance will blow her hood down, but she just like fully keeps it down. And as you Impressive. as you uh, drop her, she rolled a nat twenty on this. Hey, <laughs> so yeah, when, you, when you when you drop her, she hits the ground. Basically, combat rolls right into a bush nice. and is immediately hit from view. Oh, boom! <laughs> nice nat twenty. Nice. <laughs> so, Alva, what are you doing now? I'm walking up the driveway. You're just walking up the driveway. Okay, could you do me a perception check, please? Thirteen. Okay, so you see like some glimpses of light but you don't really realize what they are as you're walking up so as you approach the um the car park you see one of the flashlights too late before it's turned on you cantrip off (laughs) oh turn the torch off (laughs) okay the the guard the guard holding the flashlight was about to say who are you what are you doing and then she's like what what what's happening and then i run (laughs) I'm going to point back in his eyes. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just like a top. Uh, uh, is that what, is and that then what I run. Done? Yes. Okay. So, she's, <laughs> she just panics. She's just like, oh. <laughs> that guard has just been blinded, but is then messaging on the um, the closed wave radio. It's like, there's an intruder on the grounds. There's an intruder on the grounds. Get get out and search. So, uh, just How far away from me is he? Um, this guard. Oh, he'd be. Uh, hang on. Tell you what, I'm going to get a map out. Yay! Yay! Sub map. Maps, maps, maps. <laughs> Over here is the main door. So that's the manor. Um, we've got the driveway car park here. You've That's the that's path the upwards up. there. Yeah. So How feet, many feet is each hexagon? Five, uh, five feet per square. Okay. Or hexagon, rather. Cool. Oh, yeah, he's within range. I couldn't do a thing. Yeah, so if I'm you pass me your minis. Yep. Yeah, there's thing. all of us. Yep. Okay, so we've got Cassie, you're there. Quinn, did you hide in a bush? <laughs> I never said. She would have been hovering above okay, so, eyeline. So I forgot what it looked like. Leave my mini alone. I'm not an artist. So you're over here. Um, I'm definitely in a, in a bush. Ariandra's in a bush. Um, so yeah, and the guard has basically spotted you there. Would it be possible to try and do something before he reaches for the whatever he's using to contact other people? Um, I mean, can I try and yeah, do, do me a straight dexterity check to see if you're like quick enough to do something? So I'm running kind of in that direction. Okay, so you're running off dexterity. that way. Yeah, five. Ah, please be good. Fourteen, nineteen. Okay, yeah, you're definitely quick enough. So what do you want to do? I would like to cast remote access. Okay. Uh, that is one of my first level spells. Um, I can use any device within 120 feet, like it's in my hands. Oh, okay. So, what, okay. do you need to roll anything for that? Or no, I just do it. Okay, sick. Nice. So this is like a uh, it's like a walkie-talkie sort yeah. of thing. So, um, it's, so it's a closed wave radio. He's reaching up, saying there's an intruder on the ground. You reach Can out. Can I cut off his access to it? Is yeah, sure. So you can, similar to what Alva did to some of the car. You reach out, and from the, like a little compartment in your in your arm, just goes chunk, and then <laughs> out yeah. shoots um, a similar cloud of dust. Which basically speeds like an arrow from your arm. This this cloud of part, like nanotech particles just go straight towards this guy. 
hits him in the uh, neck so soft that he can't because it's just like a dust cloud. So he's not even aware of what's going on, but goes right into his closed red radio and connects his access cuts. out entirely. Yeah. Nice. So he's desperately trying to go, there's an intruder around. Oh, alert, alert, there's a repro- And he's going, like, what's got? Someone <laughs> knock him out. So he's just looking between his flashlight, which went on and off without any interaction from anyone, his radio that's not working, just going, what the hell is happening? This guy is living in a horror film. Yeah, it's just looking around like, someone knock him out. Can someone I send order into headbutt? Uh, sure. Little bat. I'm just gonna go and headbutt the guard. Okay. Fifteen will hit because yes. yeah, you're in line of sight and he hasn't clocked you, so. So yeah, yeah. just sends order in straight in the back of the head, just headbutts. Okay, is that like an attack or is that just? Uh... It's just something I want them to do. They don't actually. They can't actually. Okay. Order. Does he have any kind of profile at all? I've got a little stat block for him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm going to need to do like a strength check on that to see if you like properly knock him out. So you do a strength check to see like how hard this thing hits. Tell you what, oh my god, I'm going to. Okay, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make this a contested roll. I'm going to use his constitution against um, order strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that barely phased him. <laughs> Sorry. Aww, so he gets yeah. hit with a bat. So yeah, he just goes bump on the back of the head. <laughs> it's basically hard enough to make it. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> the bat just stays there, hisses at him, and then flies up. <laughs> this guard's just like, what is happening right now? <laughs> I've run to like the nearest birch. I guess where Ariandra is. Yeah, I so. Like, yeah. I, am I near enough to you? Like you can hear me. I'm flying, right? Yeah, I'm you're five feet up in the air. I can't reach you to talk no, to you. No, you can't, because she's already pulled out crossbow. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> so yeah, so this guard basically just is like, okay, I'm going to deal with this, and he takes off at a run in this direction sort of in the same direction that you ran off, but obviously he can't see you, so he's just yeah. running up. He's, ju- he's going to try and find someone to tell them that there are intruders on the ground. I've, no, I've run to the bush. I was going to suggest you, like, disguise self and, like, convince him he was concussed or something. I did listen. But you are crossbow to the head. Like he's about there. Are you going to shoot him with a crossbow? Yeah. Okay. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Oh, yes, that, that'll hit. Oh, I hope so. I don't know if his AC is high on 20. Four damage. Four damage. Okay. So, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> he's, 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 around, he's just like, I don't know what's going on. This is actually a horror movie. And he just takes a crossbow bolt in the shot. Oh god damn it. <laughs> and then before you can get any further, Ariandra stands up from the bush and pulls out a, tr- a dark gun. No, I was about to say, like, she, Alva would hear him say, oh god damn it. And she would turn around okay. to go and heal him. <laughs> No. She is a cleric! No. She's for the people! Stop but, it! But when Alva turns, she see, she turns around to see Ariane just stand up, pull out um, a, guns don't really exist in uh, in the city, so you don't really know what it is, but you hear just like a soft crack and like a hiss, and and this guard goes down immediately. Okay. I will run to the guard. Okay. Do a perception check. Six. He is he's, unconscious. He's fine. Is he's he fine. alive though? He's unconscious. He's unconscious. Oh no. <laughs> he's alive. Um, can I do a medicine roll, please? Um, is that just to determine yeah. how hurt he Yeah, sure. Yeah, because uh, I have proficiency in it as well. Okay, yeah, sure, go for a medicine roll. So, Redis, plus five. Eleven. <laughs> um, that, that's fine. He's unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're able to tell that um, he, is, he is unconscious. There's um, like a small dart sticking out, uh, sticking out of his neck. Mm-hmm. He is bleeding from a wound in his shoulder. It's not bleeding bad, so he's hurt, but he'll... As long as he gets like some medical attention within like the next few days, he'll be fine. Okay, that that's fine then. <laughs> what do we do with this body? This poor guy. <laughs> no, I, I now there's a body to do. I'm here in it. No, I drag him into the bushes but, and let like yeah, Ariandra's just, just like just drag him into the bushes and let's go. We don't have much go. time. Well, sure. considering I'm closest to Ariandra, she would be telling me that. Mm-hmm. So that will be me going. Yeah, we okay. can. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you gonna go over and join them? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll I'll go over and help mm-hmm. drag and drag. Drag the body into the bushes. Yeah, Come. I'll give you help. I can't help. Strength is my dumb stat. <laughs> oh. Okay, so you drag the body into the bushes. <laughs> oh no. I just uh, say like a very brief prayer. Not like anything that would do anything, just a prayer of like, okay, Guyana's watch over you. Yeah. Cool. Look, I grew up in the church, okay? <laughs> the eyes of Guyana's, for example, were trying to avoid. The eyes of Guyana's are not here. Yeah, so, no, I understand. Sorry, that's, it's that's, just a whis- a... that's a whisper in um, yeah. Riley's head. Okay, so you're now in front of the manor. I'm guessing you can just walk over yep. to here. You've got a few options. There's uh, a few windows. Uh, there's the front door as well. So it's up to you how you want to uh, how you want to get in. I start walking to the door. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, subtle. Okay. You don't want to get caught. Sorry. You look slightly different, but if someone stares at you for too yeah. long. Yep. Yeah. I've Sorry. probably don't know enough bars in my time. There's better to be I'll a side door somewhere. Okay, you go in the roof. I'm <laughs> going to go through a window. Go. We'll meet you at the top. She's gone. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take that as a yes. I guess I'm going with you then. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to... Is window on the ground floor? Uh, get Do a perception check, see if you can find a... Can I have window. the dice track, please? No, no. No, just no. <laughs> What'd you roll? Uh, three plus two. <laughs> you can see that there are windows. Yeah, that's all I wanted to know. Are there windows on the bottom floor? <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. I was like, because of, this is a fancy house, I was imagining there was like big windows. Yeah, well. yeah, there, there's, it's, it's like a manor estate, so that's sort of, it's like windows all the way across. Okay. <laughs> Can I attempt to, are they locked or are they open? <laughs> I'm Why not don't breaking you try it. And find out? I'm not breaking, yeah, um, I might have to try the. Yeah, you can g- give it a go. Oh, just we'll push it and see if it yeah. opens. Is it open? Uh, it doesn't open. Okay, can I attempt to open it? Sure. So that would be, um, Slight of hand, yeah. Okay, can I use my thieves tools? Yeah. Cool. Two, oh. but it's ten. Yeah, that, that's, you, no, that's not going to open yeah, it. Yeah, no. Like, these are expensive windows. Like, they are flush against it. There's not, like, a crack that you can, like, jimmy your way into. These are flush windows that are locked. Can I have we... a crowbar. Can we... <laughs> Okay. That is better than breaking them silently. Yeah, can, can, I, can I try and crowbar the window open? Go for it. Oh, my God. What shall I roll for that? Um, that would be yeah, that would be a strength check okay. against um, strength roll. Uh, I wish I had the scan scantrip. That's seventeen plus five, twenty-two. Yeah. Right, right okay, so, I'm so proud of you. You, wedge, <laughs> you wedge the the crowbar into the sliver gap. That, that's obviously you can't have anything that's completely flush. So there's like a teeny tiny little gap between the uh, the window and the wall. You get the crowbar Into in the there. window. <laughs> into the wall. <laughs> and then you just go. <laughs> and then. Window swings open. Nice. Like I said, broke into enough places in my time. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> okay, so um... I forgive you. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> oh, I don't need your forgiveness, but thank you. Okay, so you guys, I'm, I'm assuming you guys go in through that window. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Briley, what are you doing on the top of the house? Are there any skylights? Yes. I have crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you did that. Because I looked down and I saw a hammer, not crowbar, and I panicked. <laughs> I do have that as well. Come on. Okay, um, are you going to try and do the same thing? I also have a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> Team crowbar. I mean, if, you use, if you use the back end of a hammer, it's kind of a crowbar-ish. Hello, I monster. I I'm Mr. Crowbar. <laughs> and this is my friend, who is also a crowbar. Yeah. Uh, strength? Yeah, strength check. Yeah. Please don't fail me. 16. Ooh, just. <laughs> So you, similar to what um, what Fingal did, <laughs> crowbar goes in, <laughs> and it's like, and for a second it's look, it looks like you're about to just break the window and like all the glass is going to shatter. But um, the latch is popped off, and uh, you're able to get the window open, and you're in. Okay. Is okay. there anyone there? Um, roll a perception. Nineteen. As far as you can tell, there's no one in the room. So you're in like a very spacious loft area. This is kind of where they store old furniture and antiques and stuff. You know, stuff that's not really wanted in the big house, in mm-hmm. the main house, but is too valuable or pricey to just sell off or whatever. And so you look around, you see chairs and furniture that would have been nice at some point, but have definitely like faded or gotten a bit like busted up. Hanging on the wall, you see uh, it's like a family portrait where there's mother, father, and two little girls, one of whom you see the resemblance between her and Zarina. Um, this is clearly like Zarina when she was like five, six years old. Mm-hmm. Is it like painted out? <laughs> no, it's just been it's just been dumped up yeah. here. What do you want to do? I'm taking on the form of young Zarina. Why? You're doing what, sorry? I'm taking on the form of young Zarina using <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> using disguise. Oh no, self? are we gonna haunt some parents? <laughs> Going okay. to have a breakdown. Uh, do you need to roll anything? That's just something it's you can do. It's just an at yeah, yeah. will. Cool, yeah, go for it. So you are now you are now in the form of seven year old Celestia Rola. You can just head off through the house now and you're you're in the She's attic. She's just so. waiting at the top of the stairs of the attic. Okay. Meanwhile, down in the bottom of the house, yes. now that you are inside the house, Ariandra is able to like tap into the um, the interhouse network and she kind of sends like a little Morse code almost message to the contact. Basically just like, we're in, tell us where to meet up. And uh, she says, I'm in the top of the house, meet me by the attic. Okay. Okay. We will go up. We will, I will follow. Okay. I um, will also follow. So the house is pretty much empty. All the guards are outside. And the 
Ezra and uh, Kazima, uh, Yorona, they are off at the gala, so they are absent, so the house is pretty much empty. There's like some serving staff and uh, some other people who like keep the house in order, but they're pretty much all down in the kitchen and the basement, so the upper house is more or less deserted. You make your way through the house, meanwhile... Zarina's just like, this is the closest I've been to any of them in years. This is so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> at the top of the house, <laughs> Quinn, you hear some footsteps. Oh, okay! Um... <laughs> Turning round, who's that? Uh, no, you hit. So you hit footsteps down. So you're at the at the top of the steps to the attic. So you the footsteps you're hearing are like below you. So oh. they're like walking towards. the No, steps. yeah, she's fine. She'll stay cross legged at the top of the attic. But what she will do is change it so she's looking through her familiar's eyes. Okay. So her eyes roll to the back of her head. Jesus. And she okay. <laughs> she sees through her familiar's eyes and hears what they hear. Okay. So she is blind and deaf, mm-hmm. but she's going through the familiar. So she's going to send uh, order down to the door and just start flapping against the door to try and get someone's attention so that he... Well, the, the front door? No, no, the attic door. Okay. So she can see what's going on in the rest of the house without moving. Okay. There's steps up to the attic. You're at the top of the steps. Where is, is order a... gone? So order's going down the stairs. Okay. Into the main house. So what you see as order flies down is you see a woman coming towards the steps. It's another Eladrin woman. She kind of resembles uh, Zarina, but there are some differences. The hair's cut a bit shorter and she's a lot more like modestly dressed, sort of in like a suit almost. And yeah, she, she looks um, pretty well done up. Mm-hmm. And she, <laughs> this, uh, this woman, as she's walking along, she kind of looks up and sees Border just flapping there. Says, oh, bat! I have, to, I have to get the butler to deal with that. No time. No time right now. No time right now. <laughs> the and, bat's uh, going to follow her. Okay, well, she um, she stands and waits at the bottom of the attic stairs. And you three, you carry on through the house and you arrive. You three and Ariandra, sorry. Carry on through the house. You climb up the steps up to the top floor, which is below the attic. And there you find Echo's contact, who okay. turns around, sees you and goes, Oh, what the hell are you doing here? Oh, for God's sake. So this is Stella Yorola, who is Zarina's little sister. Uh... Bald hates me. Bald hates me. <laughs> Echo said he was sending me some crack covert operatives of his. I didn't think he was sending me Hi. the world's biggest idiot. <laughs> you called? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just points at this. No, that's that one. <laughs> this is it. Seriously, this is... Well, there's someone else, but they, they went up. They went up? I don't know, they have wings. <laughs> Stella kind of looks up at the bat. The bat flies yeah. into the attic. And she oh. goes, you can't be sick. So it's you three and who is this even? And who is that? And is the... I kind of you like ask try a to lot cover of my face. I think I have a lot of questions because I was expecting some like expert stealth people and all I've got is her and whoever the hell you people are. Well, I'm sorry, did you hear us come in? I'm still, I'm just kind of like yeah. trying to casually yeah. <clears throat> hide my face, just not saying anything. I make a living off of being covert. Well, good for you, sister, but I think we have some more important things to get through. Now, which of you is the the one Echo was talking, the chosen person? Points. <laughs> just points at her. Wait, that give me one. me! You hear from the top of the axe does. Who is that? <laughs> Sorry, I'll come down. As she comes down in the form of baby you. Oh, <laughs> for <laughs> God's sake! Oh, uh... Why would you do this? Completely drops it, goes into Law's form. Hi! Order lands on her shoulder. Meet my sister. I didn't know she was going to be inside. Uh, hey, listen, don't look at me. What do you need? What do you mean, what do... I was... I'm the person who's supposed to get you into the mainframe. You That's... called for the chosen one. Which one are you on about? The real one or the fake one? The one who is connected to the... That'd the be me. deeper one. Right, okay. I was looking very confused, but a little bit relieved. <laughs> So, wait, don't why worry. Are you, why are you I pointing at this on one? Don't you, worry about it. I feel like I should. They're be. not important. Says what? you. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I am Fingal Dalton, if you don't mind. That name means nothing to me. Well, there's some there's some dead robots over there staring in sticks that will say otherwise. Well, I don't go to the sticks. That's for grubby people. He's the muscle. <laughs> He's I the see. Muscle. Right. Okay. So I um, wash. Not Good sometimes. to you. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> okay. That's what you think of the sticks. What the hell do you think about the slums? The slums. Oh. <laughs> kind of dry heaves. <laughs> you see why I left? Yeah. Mm. Look, why are we? Oh, you know, look, this is our complex, get apparently. Get okay. Echo said that we need to. He said that there was something that you're going to be taking, 
right? She looks at me <laughs> just like trying to get a glimpse of anyone who seems competent or knows what they're doing. Well, yeah, well, yes, yes. Here's what I've been told by Echo. You need to get into the mainframe to access the uh, the blessing records. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, okay, fine, fine, <laughs> follow me. We're getting somewhere. Stella, turn- smart. Stella turns around and starts um, heading down the uh, heading down the hallway. So you realize that this is seriously hard to crack. This is really high level computing. I don't know. Why do you have her? Because she's a damn good hacker. Well, I certainly hope. I hope for all our sakes that that's true. And uh, you reach a um, one of those doors which is like completely out of sync with the rest of the house. Like the rest of the house is like sort of old, styly, you know, wood carved and uh, really nicely done. This is just like a solid steel door with like a, a keypad next to it. Stella leans over, puts in the code, and the door swings open. Inside is a terminal with uh, a bunch Ooh. of blinking monitors and uh, nice. stuff going. <laughs> just that that pretty um, stereotypical computer stuff going on. <laughs> so, door is open. Stella says, right. I've just heard some reports of a disturbance in the grounds. I'm assuming that was you. So I'm going to go and deal with that to make sure that the guards don't come in here with weapons swinging in all directions. So if you'll excuse me. And Thank you. And St- Stella dips. Uh, as she leaves, hey. uh, Alva just kind of goes, sorry. <laughs> I guess I'll watch the door. Nice to know at least someone has manners. <laughs> I take, Bye. I take, say, Fingal takes out his axe and yeah, sort of waits by the door. Serve you well in the rest of the city. You know, if there's going to be weapons swinging, I want first dibs. Oh, okay. Okay, so you are now in the room with the mainframe. Okay, I'm gonna. Can I have the? Look, you do the, your thing. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm gonna watch thing. the door. Just leaning against the door frame. Gonna put my hands on the terminal and just connect. Okay, similar to how it worked in the manager's office way back at the power plant, mm-hmm. you are able to interface with. The, the monitor, you're able to gain access to the mainframe, and you, just like back then, you are presented with basically just like in sort of inside your head, like a wall of files and information. And the entire time she's doing this, she's just like quietly muttering, like not muttering out loud because you can't really speak binary out loud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just comes out as the dialogue like, tone. Yeah, it's the dialogue tone, one, and then just like, yeah, but it's a lot of just like the way you'd greet like a, a pet, like just. Oh, hi, baby. Oh, you're doing so well. I'm so proud of you. Okay, just because you said it like that, I'm going to ask you to do an animal handling check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm just kind of listening to that, just like in fascination, because I don't know anyone outside of the church that speaks binary. Uh, I don't think. Well, I, I was going to say, because you speak binary, you can give assistance to um, Zarina if, uh, if you want to, because you speak, you speak the language as well. Please. I'll just kind of be so and be like, what are you doing? Encouraging it. Okay. You try. Okay. Uh, y- yeah. Sorry, it's been a while since I've spoken to an actual computer instead of a hella. Animal handling. What's my animal handling bonus? Okay. Okay. So you're um, all a. Well, they're doing that. Um, deep one speaks to you and just, just mm, being like. That was if they the lower one. Them to us. Yeah. If you hold your hands out, I can interface with this primitive machine. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Seventeen cuts it. Yay. So you are able to access in, and you basically have like the whole sort of desktop. <laughs> yeah. a better word. It's, it's very much just like being very encouraging of it, being very, very friendly, mm-hmm. so that in case we need to leave, like it remembers me and is nice to me. Okay, so you yeah. you got the wall of information in front of you. What are you looking for? So what were we told to look for? I'm sorry, my brain is short circuiting. <laughs> just that. Oh, it was the um, blessing distribution thing. Yes. yes. Right, that. Okay, so. Um, Finds folder. Investigation? Blessing. Yeah, investigation check. Investigation plus three is 16. 16 will cut it. So, um, because it's not particularly deep at this point, because um, this is information that the Eurona family will need to access fairly regularly. So, you are able to find all the files that pertain to uh, blessing distribution. You find the dates of the handouts, basically, to the noble families. It's pretty much regular annually this time of year. That's what Alpha was was assisting with. That canister Mm -hmm. was that year's like blessing that was going to be given to the noble families at the gala, mm. and it would then be shared out to and between the noble families. Right, and downloading everything. Cool. So also in there is the locations of where the blessings are kept within the different estates of the noble families, and uh, how much of I am how much of it each family has. Everything. Cool. So when I was assisting previously, was mm-hmm. that like the whole thing, or was that just the particular thing for that family? How do you mean? Like, was that all of the blessings? That was the whole thing. That yeah, was that, the whole thing. That was everything for the noble families for the year. Okay. 
So, Super like, yeah, I, I know Super what it looks like. Enhance. Yeah. Zoom in and hands. Okay, so um, so you downloaded all of that. Jesus Christ. That's fine. So that, that's it. You've got the information, so okay. you can roll out there if you like. Yeah, I'm going to disconnect from it. Tell it's done a great job. Like, pat, <laughs> pat. Okay. And I'll just go clear my tracks. Thanks. Cool. And then... Are we are we yeah, we're good. Sweet. Whispering in your head. Let them leave. There is something you must see, something you must know. You must understand the true mission that is upon you. And she kind of looks to you guys. Right. You guys head out, head out through the roof. I'll meet you down there. All right, yeah, no, no, no problems with me. Easy as that. <laughs> There's something I mean, about your like dogged happiness that's so endearing. <laughs> <laughs> me and my axe, nothing beats it. Okay, so Stella's kind of waiting for you at the top of the stairs, so she, she's ready to kind of let you out and escort you off the premises so it doesn't look dodgy. Yeah, everything as we need. We got it. Outstanding. Right, let's get you out for the second time, a eh, sister. Let's go. Before they all leave, you're left in the room with the mainframe, and the foresight, the deeper one, asks you to reach out your hand towards the mo- towards the mainframe. Yeah, she'll do so. You can kind of feel things in your head because you're not like Zarina or Elda. You haven't like had the body mods or the augmentation, so there's like stuff in your head that's kind of like if you can imagine like l- tiny little tendrils in your head just kind of reaching yeah. out and touching the relevant parts of your brain that allow mm. you to see inside the computer. Yeah. Okay. And as you reach out, similar sort of stuff kind of squirms out from beneath your skin into the mainframe. <laughs> Just a general round of ooh. <laughs> um, and it connects. This is kind of happening automatically, so you don't need to do anything. The, deep, the deeper one is doing this to show you some stuff. Sweet. So what you can see is like behind your eyes, you kind of see all this happening. It's kind of like switching between all the different screens, like moving mm. this file away, this file away, this file away, moving up, this file's wrong. And then you, it finally arrives at a file which is called population. Then it opens this file and within this is um, different folders. And you can see each folder is labeled like this one is orc population, tiefling population, halfling population, mm. gnome population. And the bottom file, which is kind of similar to the one that uh, Zarina found, is kind of registering to the mainframe as deleted, but it is still there. So it's like a ghost file. This one is titled Human Population. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. And the deep one is highlighting each file as it goes down, it goes down, 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 all the way to the bottom to this ghost file, which is labeled Human Population. It opens this file, and in there, there's like um, different log dates. So um, for the year, so every time this population is logged, it updates the population. And what you can see all the way down, pretty much for, for we could say, like the, these dates go back hundreds if not thousands of years, but all the ones you can see are like for the past decade or so, and all the way down, the population has been stable. So it's always been the exact same number, which is um, about one million. So it's one million, one million, one million, one million, one million, until about three days previously, where it's one million and one. Then the deep one kind of just whispers in your head, do you understand what this means? Not really. I'm seeing in your head you do not understand you and do not know what a human is. There is much to show you, much you must understand. And then the deep one kind of closes this file and exits out of it and says, the time has come to leave. You must go. Okay, and she'll go. On our way out with, I just want to move up to Stella. What's the deal with you and Echo? Echo needed the information. How much has he told you about what's going on? Not really a lot. We know about some eyes, that's about it. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know anything about that. <sighs> Look, and she kind of turns to you and just, there's like a lot of conflicting emotions on her face. And she says, I get it, okay? I understand why you left. This life, our family, it's a lot. And that's what I'm doing with Echo because there is something wrong in the city and Echo is trying to do something about that. I don't want to say more in case he doesn't want I, I get it. I get it. The point is, this, what we're doing, it's to change things. And I know that might be hard for you to believe because, of, because obviously, I'm the good daughter or whatever, or how oh, you think of me. Whatever. But I want you to believe me, I'm, I am trying to change things. Can I insight check? I believe her, but I, it, yeah, yeah, it, would take, it would take her <laughs> in a second. Plus four, so 19. Okay, yeah, she's being honest. Yeah. Like, she's being fully truthful about this. I think from 19 you can see that there's just like a flicker of anger in her eyes as well. And it's not basically the kind of anger which is like, you don't get it because you got out. 
you were able to escape this life, I couldn't, and you left me here. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's kind of that, I know we never got along, but I am your sister, and you just left me with our family, and you know what they are like. Okay. And yeah, so right. just kind of sometimes, just, look, we need to get out of here because before any of the other guards see you, so let's go. Yes, I know, I'm walking. I can talk and walk at the same time. Okay, Ariane just walking behind you, yeah. just kind of checking around. Um, she, she does also just very quietly, like, if you need an out once this is over, let me know. I appreciate that, but if all things go to plan, I won't need an out. That's a terrifying statement, and I'm not <laughs> going to read into it. <laughs> I'm not going to read into that at all. Cool, so you arrive at the outer gates. Quinn is... Go through the roof. <laughs> go through the roof. Um, oh, Law is going through the roof, okay. Law's going through the roof. Okay. Um, could you roll <laughs> me a uh, stealth check? I'm making the DC quite low on it, though, because um, generally speaking, nobody looks up. Yeah. Ooh. Unless it's like peripheral vision. Like, yeah. Day 20. Hmm? Day 20. Day 20, yeah. You hey. fully evade any kind of notice. None of the guards look up. They are fully just staying down on the uh, horizontal curve. So you fly out through the roof, back over to uh, the gate, and you reconvene with the others. Sweet. Before we leave Stella, or uh, before, before she goes back, I will kind of put my hand on her shoulder and go, thank you. <laughs> Stella kind of just gives you a look and says, you're welcome, and then just presses the button, opens the gate, and says, okay, go, 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 go. Cheers, bye. Yeah, cheers. Oh, we'll just very quietly give her my phone number before I leave. Just be <laughs> like, hey, yeah, take this. Just don't, don't ask. Just take it. Okay, bye. You're out of the estate, gate closes, and... Um, is uh, Alva going to summon the car to drive yeah. back? Yeah, find vehicle, car. Cool, okay, um, so you get back in the car and you drive back to Inferno and I think we'll leave it there. Yep, That's me, it. yeah. Cool, so. Successful mission. A successful mission. Heck yeah. Well done. Thank you very much for joining us for episode three. I don't know if the next one is going to be the last one or if it will be the penultimate one, but we'll be finishing off either next time or the time after that. So join us again next time and until then, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.